everyone, I'm Ryder Coach Tony and um, welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm doing the <laughs> doing a movie review of the movie The Whale. And the reason I'm doing it here, I don't know, I don't know if it's noise, you know, because um, I forgot to bring my microphone. But anyway, um, the reason why I want to do the, do the review now is um, so I won't forget uh, how I felt about watching the movie because it's such an emotional... Um, the movie packs in an emotional wall of the... I want to capture the, the things that I want to say because um, normally I do my reviews at home but I might forget certain things and um, I want to capture the moment um, so I just watched the movie about 10 minutes ago I just went out and thankfully we were around I think 5 people in the cinema so considering that Gateway is not really a um, you know caters to these types of movies uh, it's good that there were people who watched the movie so anyway the Whale is directed by Darren Aronofsky, so if you know Darren, he did um, um, what's that movie, the ballet movie, Black Swan, and he also did Rick Kim for a Dream, so those two I watched, but I skipped Mother and I skipped Noah, because those were big productions. And um, the reviews were not so good. And I did see part of Mother. I did see part of Noah. And um, yeah, it felt more like an action movie to me. But anyway, if you're a Darren Aronofsky fan, his movies are... Uh, especially Requiem for a Dream. Actually, The Whale is like Requiem for a Dream. It's about a family. Um, a dysfunctional family. And um, it revolves around one flawed character. No? If you remember in Requiem for a Dream, um, Ellen Burstyn played an old lady who, who believed in her son, who turned out to be uh, a drug dealer, no? played by Jared Leto. So in this movie, it's the same. It's the same. It's in the same context because um, uh, Brendan Fraser uh, plays a, an English instructor but uh, the title actually is a metaphor for his physical appearance. No? So um, when I was watching the whole movie I realized that um, it would have been better if it came out as a play and surprise surprise when the credits came out um, it, it is a play by Samuel D. Hunter and um, in the movie there are only five characters and it was shot in just one place so the living room the house of um, Brendan Fraser's character so uh, so It's one of the movies this year, so I only, the other movie that I chose for Best Picture this year is All Quiet on the Western Front, no? So I watched that on January 1, and I was very surprised because I don't really like war movies, but that was a very, very good movie, you know? Well directed, well acted. So The Whale is also a surprise because the script is very good. And by the middle of the movie, I was already crying, crying, crying many, many times um, because the central character was also a father. So any movies about fathers um, is difficult for me to watch because um, it reminds me of my own father. But anyway, a good revelation about this movie is that Brendan Fraser can actually act, you know. We know Brendan more as a matinee idol, as a handsome person. And um, for years, his movies were, were really more catering to um, 
box office, no? yung mga The Mummy. So the only movie I remember where he kind of got an acting cred was Gods and Monsters. And unsurprisingly, he played a boy toy in that movie, you know? opposite Ian McKellen, I think. So, so among the uh, cast in the movie is the only one not nominated, but the rest they were nominated. But so it's kind of a poetic justice that 20 years later he does get his nomination. And I'm actually surprised why many of the award giving bodies haven't given the uh, best actor award to him because um, I've seen Banshees, I've seen Elvis, and throughout this award season, I've been voting for Elvis, no? Austin Butler. Um, but I think Brendan does a better job here uh, because of the emotional, I think his edge here is because of the emotional impact of the script, no? and then he does it really well, and he has to do the role in prosthetics. No? And um, although I know it's difficult to do that role because he has to act like he's really wheezing, um, he's really physically handicapped. Um, so there were scenes which I think um, could could not show really how fat he was no? because he was supposed to be really, really fat. But anyway, um, there are many surprises in the movie. Number one, Hong Chao. My God, amazing! You know the only re the only reason Dalek was not nominated is maybe if her role in Triangle of Sadness had more screen time. If she was introduced much much earlier, the voters would have remembered her because um, here in the Whale, Hong Chao's role is very assertive, you know, and. Um, all the Asians who were nominated, you know, Stephanie Su and Hong Chao, had very strong personalities. So I think when they were doing the ballots, it was Dolly that they had to take out uh, because her role was only in the third act of the movie. But I felt if Ro Ruben made her role more, maybe put her in the second act and the third act, Dolly would have gotten her nomination because uh, Hong Chao amazing she's really her assertiveness here um, really shows and, and, um, and I hope they do get a Filipina actress next time because the, her role was a nurse and you know how many nurses Filipina nurses are in the in America so it's kind of sad that a Vietnamese actress got it no, not a Filipina but anyway um, Hong Chao does a really good job aside from Brendan and then surprise surprise that girl in Stranger Things is also here so I was like watching her the whole time I was like I know this girl I know this I don't know where I saw her I remembered towards the end of the movie when she was making these expressions she was that girl pala in Stranger Things um, I forgot her role but um, I think in the fourth season or third season uh, anyway Laura will remember it because um, uh, towards the last few scenes her makeup really showed who she was so uh, maybe I could bring Laura to watch the movie also because um, at least they have they know one actress in the movie which is um, that Stranger Things girl And then the best surprise, I guess, um, is Samantha Morton. Her role is very small. She just appears maybe for f five, five, eight minutes. But she's amazing in the in the scene that she was in. She was so amazing. Um, she played the the wife of Brendan Fraser's character, and um, in that small <laughs> small scene. She was so assertive, no? her role was so assertive. And then you kind of realize um, why Brendan's character fell in love with her in the first place and then um, leaves his family to be with um, his, his lover. So anyway, 
Uh, Darren is a very good director when it comes to uh, character studies of various intimate scenes, no? And he does it again here in in The Whale. If you watched um, uh, Black Swan, there are many scenes there where the camera really focuses on the face of Natalie Portman. So Natalie cannot cheat her ballet scenes because the, the camera is so close to her face and to her hands and her feet. So she has to master her ballet scenes. Otherwise, it will show that she's not a prima ballerina. So same case here. Um, the, the camera is so close to Brendan Fraser's face that um, if you know a lesser actor would make the movie uh, not work um, because the movie has to work in many levels uh, first because we don't like looking at fat people you know, if, well although we do we hate to admit it we don't like watching fat people really up close because they do look disgusting and in this movie um, Except that we know, because we know that his Brendan Fraser is really guapo in person, but uh, in the movie, it's really, he really looks disgusting. Because of the wheezing and the sweating and the, um, and the, you know, when you look at fat people, it's like, they're so pathetic, you know, because they cannot change their lives. And that's what you can see in the movie. Um, it's like he just self-destructs, you know, his character, is self-destructing slowly. If you watch the whole movie, it just happens in five days. It's a five-day scene. Scenes that happens in five days. So um, it would be difficult to watch, especially if you have uh, mental health problems, because uh, the character of Brendan Fraser is self-destructing. So his only goal, if you know he's dying, and his only goal is to reconcile his life with his daughter you know, played by that actress in Stranger Things I forgot her name no Sh Sh I don't know how to pronounce Sharde Sink the Sharde yeah Sadie or Sharde maybe Sadie Sadie Sink so um, what makes the movie interesting to me also is the he plays a yeah, an English teacher, you know, so kind of gave you an idea. Um, maybe to offer workshops for free for students who want to improve their writing. Um, the major lesson that I got from the movie is uh, you base the writing more on the honesty. Um, it's kind of a cliche, but since many students want to impress their teachers, Usually they write in, in highfalutin language, something which is so detached from who they are and what they really feel about a certain type of work. But in the movie, Brendan's character, since he's really fat and disgusting, he takes out all those layers and just tells his students to be honest with what they really feel about art, you know, about what they read, about what they... Especially because it's literature, they're reading poems and they're reading short stories and novels. So he's encouraging his students to be more honest. And um, there was a scene in the movie where Sadie takes a picture of his father, of her father, and um, he puts there. Uh, the, the caption was she plays something like, um, um, "There will be a grease fire in hell." when he dies no, but, um, and then of course Samantha's character was shocked when she read that because um, it's an insult to his dad no? but I do get the point that um, Brendan Fraser did not get mad his character did not get mad because it's the truth no? it's the truth and it's usually very difficult for people to show the truth especially in social media no? Because we all have this facade to present to the world. We have this tendency to not really show or tell what we really feel and who we really are. So, in a way, um, 
the movie shows um, that side of social media where um, it urges people to be more honest about um, how they feel about things and not be afraid to really show their feelings. No? But of course, you'd have to be a really great writer. I mean, in the movie, both Brendan and Sadie are very intuitive writers. They're, they're not, um, I mean, they don't quote people. No, no, they don't, they're not the type of people who just quotes. I think they don't know how to express themselves. So, uh, that's their, their plus in the movie. Both their characters are very good. Um, exp uh, they know how to express themselves in in a language which um, which many people have a difficulty in doing so. So they use quotes. So anyway, um, I will try to bring the kids and mama to watch it. Now I, I I'll try to convince them because the movie is very intimate, um, and I want to show Laura that um, small intimate movies are just as entertaining as any of those big movies like Avatar and, and Ant-Man. Actually, they watched Ant-Man last weekend and she said she was really bored. So, <laughs> I'll try to bring them to watch this movie this weekend. To try to show them that there are many stories in the world. There are stories about fat people. I want to see their reaction about how fat Brendan Fraser's character is. So. Let's see. Uh, it's R13. The movie is R13. So, uh, actually, the only reason why it's R13 is the first scene. There's a there's a porn clip of two men making out. But you know, I yeah, I don't know. How, I have to explain that part to them. And of course, Brendan Fraser's character, because he's gay, is uh, became gay. So. Anyway, lang. those are the reasons why they made it R13. Otherwise, the rest of the movie is um, doesn't have any subversive things to say. So, um, this movie is for those who like small, intimate movies. So, if you like Secrets and Lies, if you like In the Bedroom, maybe Nomad Land. The power of the dog. This are this will suit you because it's not so. It's it's, it's an intimate family drama. It doesn't it doesn't use any highfalutin metaphors or anything. Um, uh, I was crying in parts of the movie because I felt sad for their characters no? because they had to wait for years just to tell each other how much they loved each other. No? So. Like, Brendan's character had to wait for him to die before he could tell his wife, his ex-wife, and his daughter how he really felt. No? And the irony of it all is he left $120,000 to his daughter. So, parang, what will I do with that money if you're dead? No? So, those are some of the conflicts in the movie. Um, I mean, he could have spent the money to save himself so he could spend more time with his daughter here on earth and then he decides to just you know keep the money give it to his daughter and then die so that truth I will not take if it, if it was me personally I'd rather spend the money on me get well and spend time with my daughter because she was she's only 16 17 in the movie so she still has a long she will have a long life um, and if, if he took care of himself, his character, um, he could have had that long life himself. Also, the other interesting thing in the movie was the uh, discussion on religion. And there's a, there a part of the script which was very interesting because he said, uh, Sadie's character said, religion, no, Hong Chao Ya said that religion, um, I forgot this, I should have, anyway, I'll check the script of the movie. And this, uh, it's really well said. Um, ah, yo. Religion conditions people to make themselves feel superior to other people who do not believe in their religion. 
which is true because you can find it everywhere in your social media. Yung mga taong Diyosan, they feel superior to other people who do not, you know, believe they will be saved. So that would be a funny quote to put on my Facebook. Maybe I'll look for the script and then just quote it. Um, because I have friends who are fundamentalists and they always have this attitude where because they're Christians they feel they are more superior just because I'm gay they feel they're more superior than me um, actually I feel more like Brendan Fraser's character eh? I mean I don't give a fuck anymore um, I just want to live a decent life and like his character leave this world with a legacy with a daughter who turns out to be a decent human being so um, I hope the kids when they watch the movie this weekend they'll be touched by it I'll bring mama because mama saw this movie of Johnny Depp you know if you remember what's eating Gilbert Grape like 25 years ago the mom of Johnny Depp's character was very very fat so this is the second movie in 25 years where one of the lead characters is also very, very fat. So when Mama watched that movie, she was so affected by it because the old woman cannot do... Ah, no, she's not old. She's young, but she's just really fat. Oh, there's another movie. The third movie where she saw a very fat character was um, High Water, this Polish movie we watched on Netflix. Uh, same same idea no really fat woman and then they just gave up on life so they're self-destructing but in high water um, her character just wanted to die you know because the whole town's going to be flooded she said just leave me alone just leave me here to die I will just drown but of course you know the daughter cannot do that and that's your mother yeah? so she found a way <laughs> she found a way to save her really fat mother so that premise alone, I'm gonna bring Mama to watch. But uh, that will be the third movie about a really fat person she's going to watch. And anyway, the movie is well written. Uh, and it's written in English, so no problem, and they can understand. So anyway, if you want to watch intimate movies, uh, try to watch The Whale. I don't know if it'll be here but tomorrow. Um, I say the Kalaban is very strong. There's Ant-Man, there's Avatar. Um, so, anyway, uh, there is a market for these movies. Um, Talino naman Filipino, eh. we're not really dumb people. So, uh, they do have it here in Gateway, they have it in Trinoma, so I checked. Um, I just watched it here because, um, yeah, I have to make Sundot later, eh. so it's, the school is near here. So, um, and it's also nice to watch here for in Gateway because the movie house is a bit small. In Trinoma, kasi the movie house is a bit big, and this is a small movie. Uh, it's better if you're really near the screen, but you can really see see how disgusting Brendan Fraser's character is. This is really fat in this movie. So, the cinema here fits the, no, the, um, the intimacy of the movie. So anyway, um, I hope you subscribe to my channel, please. Uh, I haven't done the Devil's Conspiracy um, review yet. Maybe next time when I watch a movie, I'll make the review again para ano, capture ko talaga yung moment. Um, please also follow me on my Twitter, my Instagram, and my Facebook. It's down there. No? Just go through. So anyway, take care, everyone. Uh, later, I'm gonna watch Empire of Light in Trinoma because I'm sure it will be If you remember Empire of Light directed by Sam Mendes Olivia Coleman is in that movie so um, the problem with Trinoma is if you don't watch the iba, they need like 5 people to watch the movie so we'll see later if there's a show ba sa 9.30 na show so, I've seen the extra of Empire of Light. It's, a, it's beautiful. No? It's about cinema. It's like Cinema Paradiso. So I want to see how some men this treats the movie. Um, so anyway, take care everyone. Catch you later. And uh, I hope I can make the review for Empire of Light also later. Bye.